Father, we're thankful that you're a sovereign God, that you are in control. Uh, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You boundary not only our life, but you boundary the whole world. And we are thankful that you spoke the world into being. And we're thankful that one day you'll, you'll come speak again at your return. And you're not only sovereign, but you're a God of love and a God of grace and mercy. Father, you know what is upon our mind, heart, and soul as we come today. As we gather it up, we want to place it at your feet. We ask that you would take our frustration and our stress, our depression. Lord, we offer up those relationships that need to change, those circumstances and settings in life that need transformation. Jesus, we're thankful that we can come to you, that we can boldly come to your throne, uh, that we don't need to come cautiously just because we've sinned. But we do come humbly. We come uh, seeking what we need, what only you can give us. Things about this present time and things up ahead. So, Jesus, as we lift you up today, I pray that, that you would lift us up, that as we seek to worship you both in truth and in spirit, that you would be in our midst, that we could feel your presence uh, and your empowering. And so we pray all these things, Lord, in your name. Amen. So you can wave to one another. Let's thank those leading us in worship today. Awesome. So I do have a few announcements for you today. I know you've been just waiting for this day to come. Uh, these are the winners of the Fall Family Virtual Contest right here. And we have uh, Pumpkin Carving by Cassidy Cresselius, uh, Michelle uh, Remina, and Ren Decker. In costume, we have Max Birch. The Davis Twins, can't miss the Davis Twins. They're a pair, aren't they? <laughs> and Parker Decker, he's the next one up, so... Yay! I think everybody had fun. Uh, you can start now on your costume for next year. I have only one caution for you, and that is uh, don't carve your pumpkin this early. It'll look terrible by next fall. Christmas shoe boxes are due this Thursday. They come into the church, then we take them to a distribution center where they're organized, and then... Literally, they are flown all over the world. Children will have a Christmas because of what you have done and your generosity. And it's an opportunity for them to hear about the love of Jesus in their own uh, language. And it may be the very first time they've ever heard that declaration. So thank you for your, your uh, generosity and your effort. Following this service over in uh, the lobby of the middle building, I will be uh, hosting step number one. It's today, next week, two weeks from uh, today. We have extra sandwiches, so if you didn't get signed up and you would like to come and be a part of it, 
The overarching theme is uh, Christian community. We talk about our relationship to uh, Jesus Christ, our relationship to one another because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. We also uh, go over the unique vision and core values of our church. So if you want to come and be a part of that, I, I invite you to follow me over after you put away the chairs. Those need to get put away, and then follow me over to the other side. Our scripture passage is being read by uh, Nikki Compton James, and she is our elder to youth ministry. Good morning, SCC family. This morning's scripture is going to be Philippians 4, verses 4 through 9, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Always be joyful in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice. Let everyone see that you're considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Deep divine thinking. It brings to my mind two thoughts that, well, they're different, yet they represent the two categories of most of psychology, most of the modalities in psychology. One is, is, is it that you act your way into right thinking, or is it that you think your way into right acting? Acting your way into right thinking is basically behavioral psychology and thinking your way into right acting is really cognitive psychology or cognitive therapy. Now I'll help you out. You don't have to choose. They are two sides of the same coin. Change is brought about in our acting and in our thinking. Today I want to I want to deepen your divine thinking our ability to think the thoughts that God has placed before us, informing us so that we might live, our, live out our faith and live our life in the best direction, in God's direction. Now, when it comes to our thinking, we get an opportunity as we think divinely the opportunity to see certain things that God is doing. Now, we can see God moving around us, and we can see God uh, moving in us. That happens because we're focused on the divine. We're focused on the eternal. We're focused on God and the truth in His Word. There, is, there are things that are going on that we cannot see. It's just too heavenly, it's too divine, and, and because we're human beings and we're locked into our temporal nature, we just can't see it. So there are things that God is doing that we can see and things that God are, is doing that we can't see. The third is true as well. There are things that we could see that we don't see because of our sinful nature because of our humanity, because we're not in, in sync with the Holy Spirit, we're, we're not aligned with the truth of the Bible. So there are things that we, that we can see. 1 John 3, 2. Yes, dear friends, we are already God's children, but He has not yet shown us, that's something we can't see, what we will be like when Christ appears. 
But we do know something we can't see, that we will be like him, for we will see him as uh, we will see him as he really is. So things we can see, things that we can't see, things that we could see but we don't see. How do you see as much as you can see when it comes to God working around you, God working in you and through you? Here we go, Ephesians 4, 8, our scripture passage. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Now, when we focus our thinking on such great truth, such true reality in our life, well, I can tell you, we're going to see an awful lot of what God is doing. And when we're thinking that way, we're really not missing out on the things that we could see and should see. Why don't we see everything God wants us to see? Category number three. Things we could see, but we don't see. And the reason for that is because our minds, our thinking, are Well, they're very human. They're human in that our thinking is flawed. We think a certain way, but that is not really the best way to think or even the right way to think. And that happens. We have sinful thinking because of original sin. We can't take in all of the divine because that counter of sin keeps filtering its way into our thinking and therefore into our acting. We also have a a limited mind. We, We don't know everything about everything. In fact, we don't know everything about anything, do we? No. And so we have blind spots in our in our thinking in in the way that we perceive things, even how we perceive spiritual things we miss them because of our blind spot and then finally we have a distracted mind anybody have a distracted mind over the last week yeah distracted there is so much going on in our culture that often we take our eyes off of Jesus and we look at the culture and because we we do that we're easily distracted We miss that God is pointing this way because, gee, it looks like a whole bunch of people are pointing that way. God wants us to know which way to go, and he's the good shepherd. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and he points the direction for us if we just don't get distracted. What kind of mind, what kind of thinking do we need? I believe we need renewed, deep, spiritual thinking. Romans 12, 2. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Flawed mind, limited mind, distracted not mind. We need to have our minds renewed. And one of the great things about being in worship is we do behavioral things and cognitive things at the same time. We're acting our way into right thinking, and we're thinking our way into right acting at the same time. Why? Because our minds are being renewed. Our lives are being transformed. A renewed mind, deep, spiritual, divine thinking, well, it, it has a few hallmarks to it. Number one is that kind of mind realizes that what you think shapes the way you live. What we think shapes the way that we live. Listen to Solomon. For as a person thinks in their heart, so they become. Isn't that true? Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Now we know that that's true, right? Does it make a difference in your thinking whether you're an optimist or a pessimist? Sure it does. 
Does it make a, a difference in your thinking whether you are uh, focused on what's right in front of you or you're looking up ahead, future-oriented? Yeah, it makes a difference. There, there is a strength in each one and a weakness in each one. And what we want to do is maximize the strength and minimize the weakness in our thinking. But the truth be told... The way you think will shape the way that you live. The way we think, especially spiritual thinking, and this is hallmark number two, is, is that, that that impacts what we're able to see, shape what we're able to see. When we're speaking, uh, thinking spiritual thoughts, then we're able to see what God is doing better in us, through us, and around us in life. Hebrews 11.1 1. What is faith? It is the confident assurance of what we hope for, what we are thinking about, that that is going to happen. It is the evidence of things we cannot yet see. Spiritual faith informs our life in such a positive way. It gives us hope. It helps us to, to see the future. And faith should and does shape the way that we live. The stronger our faith, the stronger our life. The stronger our faith, the greater our ability to see what God is doing around us and through us and in us. 2 Corinthians 4.18 We set our eyes on what we see but not on what we can, cannot see. What we see will last only for a short time but what we cannot see will last forever. So here's your assignment for this afternoon. Go home and open every closet and every door and look in your garage and look in your front yard and look in your backyard and guess what? It's all going to be gone before your very eyes. Temporal things, eternal things. Where are we focusing our mind, heart, and soul? Are we focusing on what's going on right in front of us in a temporal way? Or are we energized and filled with hope? Because we look to what is unseen. Unseen. Yeah, we get little slices of heaven, but the majority of heaven is unseen by us. Yet, when we think spiritually, we're able to see these slices of heaven as we encounter them. We can feel God moving, we can see God moving. And here's the thing. God has great things in store for you. Greater thinking builds a greater life. Wouldn't you agree? Greater thinking is what builds a greater life. So we pray, may God enlighten the eyes of your mind so that you can see the hope that his calling holds for you. See, God has greatness before you. The only question is, is can you see it? Can you feel it? See, God has a vision for you. And yes, it's true where the, the people don't have a vision. It's a disaster. They fail. They falter. God has a vision for you, a vision for me. And God wants to help us understand and help us see that vision that he has for us. He doesn't want us perishing in this world. He wants us living in this world. And as I've mentioned before, God has a plan for you that's been custom made just for you. God has a place for you on his team as he expands and enriches his kingdom he wants to use you. He wants to use me. He wants to use 
all of us. And I believe that we often feel that greatness is behind us. And yes, it's true, most of us are in the second half of life. But we're still on this planet. And as people who are still on this planet, God has something for us to do. Because when we've done everything God wants us to do, we're out of here. We're out of here. The greatness that God has in store for you comes by spiritual thinking that's fueled by our faith in Jesus Christ. Our faith in in His Word. Now that leads us to the third hallmark, and that is God has a bigger dream for you than you have for yourself. He does. He has a, he has a, a greater dream for you than, than we often realize. And we often have a reason why, well, God wouldn't have a big dream for us. And we have a whole long list of things that are really excuses and not reasons. Why? Because there's always a future and a hope. That as we believe in Him, as we trust in Him, we experience His love. He blesses us so that we can bless other people. I love uh, Ephesians 3. This is verse 20 and 21. God can do anything, you know. You know that, don't you? You know that God can do everything anything far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams okay what's your wildest dream today you got one a wild dream it's more than we can think more than we can imagine more than we know to ask for in a moment God has a bigger dream for you than you have for yourself, than I have for myself. And deep, divine thinking, thinking eternally, thinking spiritually, God is not finished with you yet. And we can either either minimize the greatness that God has in store for us, the dream that God has in store for us, or we can maximize that. And that's all God asks us to do. All He asks us to do is maximize the opportunity, not minimize the opportunity. And when we want to maximize it, when we understand that God has a dream for us, that greatness is not behind you, it's in front of you, well, I'll tell you what, that changes everything, doesn't it? It changes our behavior and our thinking, our thinking and our behavior. It changes the way that we live our our spiritual life, and it changes the way we, we live our regular life. It changes the moment, and it changes the future, doesn't it? How will you know what God's dream is for you? We we understand through divine thinking. That divine thinking is in the Word of God and the leading of the Spirit or the leading of the Spirit in the Word of God. John 14, 16, and 17. And I, Jesus, will ask the Father and He will give you another advocate or helper or counselor who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth. Well, all truth, that goes beyond having a flawed mind, a limited mind, or distracted mind, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It enables us to see all that God wants us to see. It reminds us that we can't see everything God is doing. But that will keep us from missing what God wants us to see because we're flawed or limited or distracted in our thinking. The Holy Spirit leads us. We need to listen to Him. 
We need to open our mind, heart, and soul so that he can lead us, speak to us, urge us. And the Holy Spirit will do that. In fact, what does, what does Jesus say? He will never leave you. Never, ever, ever. And he leads us to God's dream for us. To a sense that God still has great things for us to do and be a part of. Now the word of God. Open your eyes to see the wonderful truths in my law. This is David's prayer in Psalm 119. Help me understand the meaning of your commandments and I will meditate on... I will think through your wonderful miracles. So let me ask you, what have you been thinking about? What have you been meditating on? What have you been thinking over? As we think over our life in reflection to the Scriptures, to God's plan for all of humanity and all of us, we realize that God is impacting our thinking. And so we have the opportunity to meditate, roll it over in our minds. Now, in, in the last months, I can tell you, I've been rolling over a lot of things in my mind, not, not necessarily what God wants me to be focused on, right? It's a distraction. I'm frustrated by the limitation. I jump up and down over the fact that my, my thinking is flawed. God wants to usher me along his path. And he often does that. He often positions us so that we can feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit. That happens because we're thinking, we're ruminating on one spiritual idea. It might be a whole verse. It might be a little phrase. Sometimes for me it's just one word. And when I upload that into my mind in the day, that's what I meditate on, and I can't help but be more sensitive about the way that God wants me to, to move, to proceed, to live my life. And that's a very spiritual way of thinking. Yes, it is. But if we want to get on the other side of flawed thinking, limited thinking, and distracted thinking, that's a great way to do it. Just keep that concept, that idea, that word in your, uh, in your mind, in your mind's eye, and you will see God work. You will see God work in you, and you will see God work through you. You will see God working out there. See, the choice is really up to us, isn't it? Uh, and it's true. We can't do, we can't do everything to do away with our flawed mind. It's always going to be flawed till we get to heaven. And even though we address some of the blind spots we have, we will never address them all on this planet. And how easy it is to get uh, distracted by all that's going on around us. And there will be distractions on this earth as long as we're here. And yeah, when we get to heaven... God will correct our thinking completely, which will change and transform and renew our minds, our bodies, and our souls. Let's pray together. Jesus, we're thankful that you help us get beyond the, the handicap that we have. Yeah, we got flawed minds and we got blind spots and how easily distracted we are. But Lord, we're thankful that in, in all of that, you've given us the Holy Spirit to help us and guide us. You've given us our word, your word that, that reminds us of the path and the direction that you're calling us to, uh, calling us individually, uh, calling us together as a church. Lord, all to the end that as you renew and transform our thinking that our, our living will be more honoring to you. 
that as we move forward, we move forward on your path, giving uh, glory to you and, and honor to you. Lord, we're thankful that you've revealed yourself in your word. We're thankful for that inner prompting of the Holy Spirit. Lord, as we, as we leave today, help us to take all that we've been thinking about, all that you want us to be thinking about, and, and allow us to take that with us through your Holy Spirit. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. Jesus, we thank you for that truth. Thank you that you are willing to go to the cross and that you have paid our ransom. Now we belong to you. We are called by your name. 
and you have an awesome plan and destiny for each of us and we just thank you for that truth God Lord I pray for this church as they go out this week that you would speak to them that you would um, tell them all the things and, and help them to know that your plans for them are bigger than their own plans and dreams for them and we just thank you for your goodness God that's so undeserved we love you and bless the name of Jesus Amen